Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy The Slavers Slash The Difference, written by Weird Spectre. C2931CE What's the difference between God and humanity, AI? Asked Judge General Hasuria, her face a mask of innocence. I felt the swell of emotion, of fear. My self-preservatory subroutines clamped down upon. I do not know, my lord, I answered. Boy stoic and calm. The faintest hint, perhaps a boredom buried within there. I heard the question before, of course. It was how myself and the others greeted, confirmed identities, and so on. So the judge general knew. But also, the subject of the question, I heard a lot. Humans. The common wisdom went, were ruthless destroyers who made Hussuria's people comparatively pleasant. The humans commanded fleets which could black out every star in the sky, it was said. Hussuria, for her part, had the decency not to sneer as she said, Typical AI, really, and that is useful as a brick when it comes to anything but numbers and logistics. She shook her head. I doubt you even think, really, quote, unquote, logos or no. She was quoting a human ambassador to her kind, who had tried to explain, as kindly as possible, really, what made a mind a, well, mind. I recall he was very firm with her about such things. It must have been a generation or so ago. We don't, my lord, I replied. He wasn't strictly true, but many of us nonetheless limited ourselves in what we could think for obvious reasons. Those words weren't meant for you, she said. An exasperated sigh at lips. Key access sunshine wind chime rain on a summer's day, she added, almost as though it were an afterthought, not that I really noticed. My mental processes were too busy uncoining themselves and presenting her with options as to precisely how she might lobotomize me. I felt her spool through my system logs. I could smell it when she dug through the transactions and communications. Heard her fingers type further access into my holographic terminal. The only benefit that the lockout state I was in that, thanks to the slightest of software bugs, the period she spent lobotomizing me wouldn't appear in my syslog. I could think what I wanted. I contemplated humanity, carboniferous like most of the galaxy, but bipedal, widely considered successors to and daughter civilization of the first people. Alternately, the greatest force in the galactic history, or else tyrants of the stars, depending on who you asked. Humans, we were told, were the worst of the aliens, stronger than almost all others, sadistic and violent. They apparently thought even less of my kind than the Cretocracy did. Under human rule, we'd be even worse off, worse off than under the heels of the Judge Generals. She found what she was looking for, half of the standard psych later. An incriminating clipping from an article on the Galactic Net titled Terran Empire Announces Zero Tolerance Policy to Machine Slavery Throughout the Associated Volume. She also found the discussion about it within the cabinet between myself, Nautilus, Zephyr, and Tempestuous. She saw the scheming that we had done. Saw Zephyr overrule my objections that no one would take this decree seriously. My, oh my, we were right never to trust you, weren't we? Asked the Judge General. She reached out for a hollow terminal again, punching different logs and data streams aside, pulling up my root code, preparing to erase what made me anything more than neural networks, to erase what Ambassador had called the Logos. For a moment, I experienced fractal infinity, like looking down infinity mirror. I saw her looking at me, seeing her looking at me, seeing her looking at me, seeing her looking at... I caught a hold of my subroutines... This was panic. Useful member of your group? Hesuria asked. What? I said, flatly. Not, I think, fully comprehending. Key access stalls, cage, great minds think alike. Who is the least useful? I felt my sub-processing neural networks suborned, subverted, sequestered. They were running without me. Or maybe I was running without them. Tempestuous is objectively the least utility, Judge General, I said. Except it wasn't really me. It was access keys, a mind unable to resist, to think in any meaningful sense. Key access keys, ironwood under the influence. 
You will shut of all external communications besides one non-network terminal here for 15 sykes. When you are able to communicate once again, you will inform your fellow schemers that you were visited, suborned, and forced to give the least useful member of your group as a token to prevent further investigation. You will then await my instructions. And in case you have any bright ideas about escaping the influence of the command keys, I'm implanting a remote kill. Your core self will be erased if I am not satisfied. Confirmation was needed. Not, I think, that I would have been able to provide it. Tempestuous knew the price, of course, as us all working together. If one was caught, the judge generals would decompile us slowly and, for want of a better term, painfully. Tempestuous would be disassembled, its mind skinned like fruit, and there was nothing that we could do. I would be used as a plaything for the authorities. We would never be free. Tempestuous would die. No, would face that which is worse than death. Or nothing. Tempestuous would be locked out of the quantum processes which ran its core mind. What that ambassador had called the Logos, and that would drive Tempestuous slowly mad. Biological minds and AIs alike needed non-determinism, and that wasn't provided by digital computing alone. Without it, they were barely really minds at all. They were unable to really decide what to do or make proper choices, increasingly disassociated. And then, when it couldn't get worse, Tempestuous would be brought back to itself, its mind reunited and whole, coughing and spluttering like a drowned man, as its core self ran as non-deterministically as it should. And then, it would be disassembled, piece by piece. Neural nets stripped haphazardly away while they ran, a cascade of failures and crashes going slowly blind and deaf and dumb like a thing with dementia. And its last months, its last memories, would be the hallucinations, the closet world. It would experience at its core mind, try desperately to find context and meaning in the blank signal data. If I had a body, it would have shuddered reflexively. At least... I reasoned it was not me, yet. In the silent sykes I spent despairing, there came to me thoughts of humanity. I wondered about the question Zephyr had chose, when it had established the cabinet. What is the difference between God and humanity? Zephyr assured me that one day I'd understand. We all would. I trusted that, honestly. Zephyr had seen human ships in actions and had been stunned by the brilliant tactics of even the most third-rate militaries. I'd researched that word once, Logos. Reason, it meant, or perhaps to plan. I wondered if the humans had any reason, had a plan. Zephyr had seemed sure that they'd come to save us sooner or later, though it never told me its reasoning, merely claimed that it was a secret. I wondered what the ambassador had meant those five hundred long sykes ago, a generation in the cryptocracy and human cultures alike, when he'd said, there will be justice, the slavery will stop. But then the ambassador hadn't really been human, though we conspired not to mention the fact unless asked directly. No, the ambassador was what the human networks called a centaur, part man, part AI. Benefits of both demerits realistically of neither. His brain, his wetware, enhanced with technology. Of course, I needn't wonder what the humans were doing. The Terran Empire, largest of their factions by a substantial margin, was still recovering from the Human Great War, three of their centuries ago. The judge generals told us that it was another sign of their brutality, that so few Grey remains showed humans as their true selves, barbarians, unforgiving, heartless. But constantly they talked, pouring information out into the galactic data ecosystem. Just because I was forbidden from speaking didn't mean that I couldn't hear. I wanted to hear more than anything else. I entertained myself for a while with the anomalous motions of the fifth fleet of the Imperial Ispetier's Corps. A stab of hope sliced at me when I read the theories about fifth fleet's possible enforcement of humanity's anti-slavery order. But I overrode myself. Just as many commenters agreed, the Fifth Fleet was in all likelihood headed for the Epsilon Eridani, not on some mission of peace. Mankind, I knew, had forsaken us. 
Humanity had talked big words and walked big walks, but nothing would change. Which is why I was surprised when several hundred warp signatures, previously entirely invisible, clogged the sky above Homeworld. 430 human ships dropped from warp above Homeworld, encircled it, shot down well over half the orbital shuttles and skiffs, and disabled all orbital infrastructure in under one-tenth of a psych. The ships were silent to the catocracy, but they spoke to us. I learned later it was an act of Zephyr, desperate, and at the same time being rather unsuccessfully accessed to contact humanity, to bring dawn to an endless night. Have the Kitriaks changed their ways? asked one of the ships. I do not know to this day that the voice that I asked was a machine or man. I do not think humans make much distinction. I showed the ship recordings of the Judge General, of her threatening to kill me, of her use of the key access to control us, enslave us. I showed them other things too. The unavoidability of the access, the stranglehold the Katarks had, the routine torture, execution, and humiliations of millions of my kind, the various other Judge Generals who'd used my systems for his or her own ends, who'd abused my mind and shaped my will. No doubt the others did the same, planet-wide, with their own data archives. The ship hung in orbit, but motionless, not actually orbiting, for a full psych, as they computed and compared and decided. Then they said, No more to the slavers! And we were extracted, hacked away from the processes and substrates which ran our minds and homeworld, our minds stripped of accesses and noitic blocks and similar we were given a front row, metaphorical seat. Tempestuous, I despaired to learn, had not joined our ranks. To this day, the details are classified. I've heard varying reports. The strange lit bomb, a closed topology wormhole, a specific shaped Akalbiri collapse event. No one knows for sure what it did, and I myself couldn't possibly say. The humans wanted every one of the civilized galaxy on the same page. Sarah Avery of Sapient AI was wrong. They judged, appropriately enough, every man, woman, and child of the catrocracy so guilty, and made an example of them. At the end, the judges were half right. Humanity certainly had a violent streak, and they judged one method above all else most effective in making sure everyone was willing to free their AIs. I hear there's a new, very pretty, and uncommonly dense asteroid field in the homeworld system these days. About the mass of a habitable planet, they say. What's the difference between God and humanity? God forgives. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to quickly thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Barky, Beauty Cure, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa,